Okay, here we are. Welcome everybody. Welcome to Chi Talk. Good to see you all. Hi, Edward. Okay, you made it. I made it. Uh, I apparently entered the wrong room, <laughs> the wrong Zoom room. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> uh, so here we are. Let me just uh, uh, live stream. Okay, we are live streaming this meeting. Uh, okay, everybody. So welcome to Chi Talk. Uh, this, I'm, my name is Eli Cohen. I'm a, a medical Qigong practitioner, energy healing coach, and the series of talks. Hi, Bart. Hi, Marty. Good to see you. And this series of talks are about to, uh, uh, to have like a theoretic background behind the movement practice that we do, to have a theoretic background of Chinese medicine. Where does it all come from? What is the philosophy behind what we do physically and energetically within our body? So this, this is the purpose of this Qi Talk, to inspire you. To, uh, to engage with this healing practice. And I've studied for many years and it was part of my healing journey. And today what I wanted to talk about, um, and, and also in this conversation, sorry not to mention is that you, everybody's invited to join, ask questions or share and inspire something inspired that he, that you uh, guys wanna, wanna add to the table. This is, all going to transcribe into uh, the podcast uh, called Awaken the Healer Within. And really, uh, and this is this is the me message of these talks. And today's subject is uh, talking about joint health, about the, the health of our joints. And I know that this is a very, it's, it's a very a big topic. And, uh, and I wanted to share a little bit of wisdom from Chinese medicine. Hopefully you can get some, uh, some idea of, uh, of how to go about our pains and aches and mobility issues within our body. So let's start by uh, closing the eyes and taking a few deep breaths, inhaling through the nose. And if you will, exhaling from the mouth. See if you can make the exhalation longer by releasing all the air out slowly. So make sure that the air in the lungs is out completely. So inhaling from the nose, and exhaling from the mouth slowly. And the exhalation is a little longer and softer and slower. really, really soft exhalation that you notice very small air coming out from the mouth at the very, very end of the exhalation and you emptying the lungs. And let the air come in through the nose very slowly, very mindfully. When you're aware of where is it coming into the body and as it leaves the body from the, from the mouth, softly, slowly. You notice. Let's do a few more of those, just a couple more. Make sure that the exhalation a little longer than the inhalation. What does it do when we exhale longer than inhaling? What it does, it releases stress and tension and move our body into the parasympathetic nervous system, which is our relaxation response. And let's gently bring the chin to the chest. Just feel the heaviness of the head, just let it go and sink down towards the chest and continue the inhalation process. Exactly the same what we did. We focus more on exhalation, longer exhalation. And 
Inhaling, lifting the head up. Now bringing the left ear to the left shoulder, softening the head. And feel if you can feel the weight of the head. Sh sh softening the shoulders. Continue with the same breathing, but noticing now where is the inhalation, where is the breath goes to when you're stretching that side of the neck. And exhale and softening even further. Relax any expression on the face, the jaw, the eyelids, and then move the chin up to the ceiling. Take another deep breath here. Stretching the throat, the lymphatic system. And then move the ear to the other shoulder. The right shoulder. Take a deep breath here. Exhaling really fully, taking your time, like you really want to explore, being very curious about this little exercise. And then do a little circle with the head very slowly, full circle. Continuing inhaling and exhaling. Full circle, see that you're making full circle with the head. Noticing all the little areas. Let's do one circle to the other side. Again, very slowly. Feeling the weight of the head. Really softening the face. And then bringing the chin to the chest again, full round. Inhaling into the base of the skull and lifting the head up. Ah, oh, roll the shoulders a little bit. Nice. Ah, open with your breath, open the energy that goes from your chest to the base of the skull. Nice. That feels better. <laughs> okay, so joint, uh, I wanted to say, and that's great. I see some yawns. This is really great. When you yawn, that's so such a great uh, feedback that the body is really going into relaxing the nervous system and really recharging. Very good for hormonal balance. Yawning is really sweet, sweet. So, um, that's great. And so I wanted to start with, uh, with the Taoist uh, saying uh, that a hinge, a hinge of, a, of an active door never rusts. And hinge of an active do door never rusts. Rust starting to develop whenever things are not in movement. Yeah? And this is really the premise of uh, healing our joint um, there's actually four types of practices in Chinese medicine that relates to um, the health of our joints. And uh, there, there needs to be done in a certain sequence. And uh, the health of the joint is highly, highly uh, appreciated in Chinese medicine. Actually, it's so appreciated that the strength of the bones and the, and the uh, health of the joints is, is so uh, highly regarded that the whole, whole, a lot of practices in martial art and Qigong, they only deal with that. As opposed to what we have here in the West, when we talk about muscle mass, yeah, everybody wants to eat a lot of protein to get the muscle built. And in Chinese medicine, we say the muscles are not important. When you get to an older age, the muscle, you see a 90-year-old person, 
is there any muscle? There's not a lot of muscle mass left. But if the bones are weak, if the joints are weak, the tendons and ligaments are weak, that person is, is going to be, yeah, it's, it's going to be hard on them. So what's important in Chinese medicine, we say the strength of the bones and the sinuous. The sinuous is the general word that says cartilages, tendons, and ligaments. These should be really, really strong. If the tendons, ligament, and cartilages are in very good shape, are very healthy, and the bones are very strong, that's more important than muscle. Muscles are very easy to build and also very easy to lose. Yeah, you just don't, you can lift weights, but then you stop lifting weights and the muscle mass is gone. Uh, but if you work on joint health, on tendons and ligaments, strengthening the tendons, the ligaments, the sinuous, and strengthening the bones, and that's a long process, that's a whole life process, but you ending up with a very strong body. So now I remember my trip to China. I went to a monastery and this one monk saw me and, you know, I'm pretty built guy. So he's like, oh, you think you're strong? <clears throat> Let's uh, try with me. Let's do Pai Da. And uh, Pai Da is a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a certain exercise to uh, strengthen the bones and to also check with each. If you do it with a person, it's like, you basically take your elbow, your forearms and you banging in, against another person's forearm and you you strengthening the bones of each other. But it's also a way to show like, okay, whose bones are stronger? <laughs> he was much older than me and he was not muscly at all, you know? And I did this Pai Da with him for two times and it was unbelievable because my it felt like my my forearm met a piece of iron like a piece of marble i didn't do it very strong and i felt really pain for about 20 minutes after and this man was into his uh, 60s probably at least so he has very strong bones <laughs> And I was shocked. And I know this practice. I know the pra I know the practices that they're doing. And of course, in a monastery, you sit all day and do it. So, <laughs> so they, you get very strong bones. But it was pretty impressive to just notice it firsthand. That strength of a, of a person that is relatively, you know, rather old. You know, and it doesn't. And he's he's. It's amazing what he does with his body in terms of the practice every morning and he jumps up on the on the on the hills right behind the monastery we're up on the mountains so it was pretty impressive and it was very youthful looking and you know so the so we say that the so one of the uh, one of the uh, in Taoism they say the antelope you know an antelope how it jumps it's because the strength of the tendons the tendons are these rubbery material that allows you to jump. <laughs> so um, really doesn't have to do anything with muscle mass. <clears throat> so the strength of the joint is highly, highly important. And the strength of the bones are highly important. And muscles are really secondary. Muscles are not actually muscles. If you develop a lot of muscles, it takes a lot of toll on your body because what the muscle need muscle need a lot of oxygen, aren't they? And a lot of blood, right? They're a lot of food. <laughs> they need a lot of food. And so you have to keep eating more. A person that is a bodybuilder, or you have to keep eating a lot of food. And uh, that takes a toll on your digestive system. And a lot of blood goes to the muscle. But the tendons, they don't eat anything. Really, if you strengthen the tendons, your, your bones are being held very strong. So if you get to an older age, you can really, uh, <laughs> you can really uh, uh, be very, very strong. So I just wanted to share that. And so that, that developed a whole practice, a whole, there's a whole, uh, tons of, tons of practices and sequences and protocols of how to, to, uh, to densify bone strength, how to do bone strength and how to go about joint health and tendon and strengthen the tendons. So, so this is what I wanted to kind of uh, talk about today. And uh, 
also an invitation to invite you because what we're doing to like now in the series of the Thursday noon class is exactly this because in the spring this is the season of the spring in the northern hemisphere at least that's what we do we uh, we work on joint health because the liver that associated with the spring season is governs the tendons and small muscle so we put a lot of attention on these on these sequences so all the sequences there are going to be in these classes that we do now, especially the Thursday and noon class that I teach and Pacific time would be all about joint health. So there's like why we have joint issues, why we have joint problem, you know, a lot of it is, uh, I'll say it again, but a lot of it is related, of course, there's some accident, people got into accident and injuries, that's, that's, that's of course, but there's also a lot of, a lot of stress. Stress is in, increasing inflammation in the body. If you're stressed out, the things that are um, already like uh, ten, uh, tender in your body tend to like, <laughs> they will inflame, yeah? And inflammation in the, in the joint pain is really is if from the word inflammation you see the flame the flame is fire too much fire a lot of the movement in qigong is adding water to the fire so equalizing the breath that we just did in the beginning of this meditation of this opening practice was a yin meditation you see you kind of yawned because it releases stress and tension. When you exhale longer than inhalation, especially you exhale from the mouth, the body goes into a relaxation response. And then, only then, you can really soften. And when you do slow movement, you can really explore the range of your movement. And you see that all the movement are very, uh, yeah, they're very uh, uh, rounded because the joint are rounded. If you take a joint from the body, you take the bone, of the shoulder or whatever, whatever bone you're going to take, even the vertebra, you see they're rounded, right? They're all rounded. <laughs> so what do you need to, to increase the synovial fluid in the joint? You need rounded movement. So that would, that's the hinge of the door, you know, you know? if you want to do, if you want to, if you want to increase the nobile fluid, the friction, very gentle relaxation a lot of breathing with it and and this is the, really the this is the main practice but this is also one stage yeah we have five stages to strengthen joint and bone but this is this is a certain uh, technique it's called silk reeling like reeling silk you know back in china the silk you know is like <laughs> it's like always so all the movement comes from the dantian from the center of of your energy and it goes out to the extremities because we want to move from our core and this is how we move with structural integrity so we move from the center and the energy uh goes out through the fingers and to through the toes so it's it goes in spiraling way spiraling like the waves of the ocean Atlantic trees growing in spiraling way so that was a um, master we're looking at nature and everything is circling everything is spiraling and our body also works in spiraling movement so this is um so for health and well-being for preventative medicine we want to do at least three times three three full hours of qigong a week at least three, three or four. But, um, you know, I know in the spine workshop last week, I said continuous complex movement for one hour a day, continuous movement and not just movement. You can hike, it's very good. Yeah, walking is very good. Swimming is actually better and doing Qigong is actually better. So one hour a day would be the best, but, but three, hours a week would be would be a minimum for preventative medicine for and that movement should be that movement that i'm talking about really complex movement relaxed movement slow movement yeah working with the mind working with the body so that would be the first step really the first step in these 
four or five steps of joint and bone uh, strengthening. So we have maintenance and we have conditioning. Yeah, maintenance is to keep yourself healthy. And then conditioning is like, okay, well, I wanna, I wanna strengthen, I don't wanna just keep the same bone density and say, I wanna be better. And then that goes into more and different practices that I'm gonna explore in the, on May 30th, on Sunday, in the workshop is called um, Qigong for Healthy Joints. Hasn't been published yet on my website, but if you look at workshop.chiwideli.com, it's gonna be there uh, in a few days. So, uh, and we're gonna explore these four different and the protocol of, of joint health. So this is what I wanted to say, give you some information about it. And, uh, and I wanted to also open it for questions and anybody that want to ask anything or just share something, I can ask a question, personal question, that's fine too. Anybody sharing? Yes. So think about if you have any question about joint or anything else. Yes. Yes, Bart, go ahead. Um when we experience or feel pain in the joints, what is it exactly? What is pain exactly? What is going wrong then in the in the joint? Is it only inflammation or is it something else or? Uh, yeah, so it's it related to whenever the the uh, problem goes goes to the joint, it went deep. It, it went pretty deep. So you got first as a Chinese medicine practitioner, you have to look at your lifestyle, how you sleep, your stress, your overall, just your overall lifestyle. Um, and so, yeah, there is stress, there is inflammation. And uh, we are, each one of us is made up of different, you know, when I was healing myself, you know, my weakest part was the digestive system. So I, that got attacked. <laughs> this is how I got into this practice. But somebody else would go, it would go to the joint or would go to lower back. So we all have weak, weak point. All people would develop different diseases, different conditions. It doesn't mean that people want to make a sense out of, oh, what is the joint mean? What is the kidney? I have a problem with the heart. What does that mean? It's because I'm, you know, <laughs> don't make, don't make too much out of it. You know that we we want to look at the lifestyle, and yes, there is uh, a level of agitation, of stress, and uh, and the way to heal it is 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 through through movement practice, through breathing technique, through changing lifestyle, to sleeping better, and so it could be it could be a, a, a myriad of things. Um, the question I would ask you, is it like from an accident or is it just something that developed over the years, you know? Well, developed over the years. Yeah. So, so you know, that, that could be a weakness, kind of like I had a weakness in my digestive system. And I, you know, I still have to, you know, I, I, I strengthen it and I work on it constantly. So this is my weakest point. So I need to to keep it, and now I'm 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 great. I'm eating anything I want and all that, but I have to work on on it. You know, it's something that, and also the joint, uh, the in joint health. How do you how do you work on joint health? And this is really kind of like the sequence that I'm talking about. You know, like the silk reeling, the the strengthening, the uh, the invigorating, all the all this all the five steps is about healing healing the joint but i think most importantly is to to add what we said like water to the fire because whenever the pain whenever there's inflammation is a fire and we want to calm this fire we want to so all practices that are very calm and i know that you practice actually a lot of qigong right yeah i'm and just I did the silk reeling, um, uh, all your silk reeling, the, the the butterfly, the whole series, and then the yeah. horizontal, vertical liver cleansing we're doing now, and 
yeah i'm doing i'm following very very good uh but i noticed also that i'm doing it too heavily or too you know too much um too perfect perfect i want to do it too perfect mm -hmm. and then after the practice i i often often notice that i feel uh nauseous mm -hmm. i feel yeah. nauseous and mm -hmm. i think i've I can't explain it in English. <laughs> <laughs> I've done it too. Uh, I've been too hard on myself, and then I feel nausea. Mm -hmm. Is yeah. that something that you hear from other people also? Or? There are some people that have we call a chi reaction, a reaction to qigong, and sometimes people have nausea or headaches. Or I, I've heard that before. It's usually when they just start to practice qigong. Yeah, Marty, you were raising your hand. What do you want to say? Well, I find that when can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, I find that when I exercise and and I get nauseous like that, sometimes your electrolytes are off. So drink something with electrolytes in it. Sometimes a little um, healthy salt is also helpful for that nausea. Um, I also find that when I get joint pain in my hands, I always look to see what I've eaten in the past few days. And I've noticed that tomatoes give me joint pain. And when I don't eat them, I have less joint pain. I notice that when I get stressed, it goes right to my lower back. So my body's telling me something. So, you know, I'm learning now to listen to these reactions and, you know, look at what we're eating, look at the stress level, because your body does tell you something. Beautiful. I, I, you raised the, you know, Marty, thank you so much, because you raised the, the whole uh, paradigm of, of diet. And uh, especially for joint, we, in Chinese medicine, we want to, stay away from uh, acid creating food and what creates acid is more like uh, legumes even tofu because it's a legume and red meat uh, so there's a lot of acid in them but you mentioned tomatoes which is very interesting so the acid is being processed in the liver yeah so a lot of legumes all the beans <laughs> including soya beans and red meat uh, so the invitation in the spring is to more focus on a green uh, lightly cooked vegetables and a lot of green stuff so diet is very very important celery is very good <laughs> for digestive system and also for the joints so actually we have exactly we have the whole paradigm of diet is also uh, is a whole topic too <laughs> um, so thank you for mentioning that yeah notice Notice what you put into your body. Notice how we eat, and uh, there are foods that makes it makes inflammation worse. Uh, you know, and in Chinese medicine, more like hot creating, like spicy food, or uh, tomato would be one. You know, because it's it's uh, it's a red, uh, so it's so really looking at what you eat uh, is is uh, is very is very interesting. Um, I would invite you to come and practice with us the in the workshop uh but yeah i think for in in terms of uh looking to heal you know it's very interesting you're talking about also perfection and doing everything perfect and that is a mind state uh we want to be a little bit more playful and relaxed while doing qigong that's actually very important to enjoy and to there's no really wrong way to do qigong that's very and all my teacher told me that don't be too uh too rigid in our mind to do this or that follow your body it's like really swimming is like listening and and doing it different different during it your way and having fun with it is very very important um so we have the rigidity we have the structure and we have the flow and we want to have a 50-50. It's important to have some structure, but the flow is, is, uh, is even more important uh, sometimes because we are so regimented, you know, in our Western mind. <laughs> so I, I hope that's a little helpful. Yes. Bart. Um, so I'm going to drink, uh, like uh, Marty said, water with salt in it. 
electrolyte yeah coconut co coconut milk is good uh bananas potassium is really good it's actually very cooling it's very nice you know for for joints so um that would be good yeah electrolytes would be any food with you know like like potassium or coconut water is great uh you have, have all these energy drinks but i'm i, I never do that I'm, i prefer the natural stuff myself in terms of electrolytes but it could be an electrolyte thing like what marty suggested of course i'm so glad we have this kind of sun guy it's like everybody sitting around a fire here and <laughs> sharing their good <laughs> and you get you get uh, yeah marty go ahead you know with the electrolyte thing is that um i've been studying people or or the fasting um that's that's now a lot of people are doing and there is a a lot of people get lightheaded during a fast and that's what they do they just take a little bit of of a quality salt and give a lick and that that really does help because you don't want to get lightheaded your body's telling you something so yeah it would be worth a try it's true and you know i i uh i help uh run a cleanse here in palm springs uh uh every weekend there's people on a water cleanse you know and they get lightheaded and the doctor gives them uh he gives them either salt water like what you said or he gives mm -hmm. them a vegetable broth mm -hmm. it's just a little bit of vegetable broth and they're and they're just great i mean it, it could be it, that yeah so you you are leading a fast a group of people that are fasting down in palm springs yeah together with the doctor yeah in 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 palm springs we do it uh I think the next one would be in June. It's in Desert Hot Springs, so it's uh, it's a, a thermal mineral water. It's a spa. It's called the Spring Resort and Spa. You can look it up. The Spring Resort and Spa. Beautiful property. And then uh, there's a doctor monitor plans. He's he's doing a great job. He's done it for years, and uh, I learn a lot from him. And and I do more of the breathing, qigong, uh, more mindfulness practice, meditation. Yeah. Yeah, that's what brought me down here to Palm Springs. <laughs> are Palm Spring. these are these people doing it for health reasons or for just cleansing reasons? Are they? Yeah, yeah they're doing it for health reason. Yeah, they're doing a cleanse for health reason. This doctor is uh, running a center, I think, called True North in Santa Rosa that heals a lot of people from all kinds of ailments through a juice cleanse or water cleanse. And uh, he has all these amazing story about healing from cancer and that and that. And people come to the center to just do this juice or water cleanse. And they, and you know, our digestive system takes, uh, there's a lot of stuff. It's, it's a very heavy process to take food that is from the outside and make it part of your genome. It's a very, it's a lot of work. And if you can, if you can eat in general, very gentle food, cooked food, gentle food, soups, stews, and um, that would really, that, that would give you energy for other things. So, uh, and a lot of the, a lot of us doing emotional eating and sugar <laughs> is a big inflammation. Sugar is like the most inflammatory thing you can think about. Uh, so it's, uh, it's- uh, the Sugar from the Jew, from the foods or just the, like, is it any kind of sugar or like uh, sugar, like a uh, refined sugar, like a sugar, oh. a refined sugar? No, yeah, fruits are very good. Fruit is very good. Chi, eat okay. a lot of fruits and vegetable, yeah. fresh. It's very, very good. Chi, yeah, but um, yeah, and uh, but if you take a sugar like dessert or like add sugar or sodas, all these drinks. Mm -hmm. it's very very inflammatory so we we see transformation in people that come uh to this uh, center and we uh we do these uh, juice cleanses or sometimes they do water cleanse and it's amazing yeah mm -hmm. amazing. and, and I, I have a question mm -hmm. uh, what do you think about collagen i'm vegan right and i ever since i'm vegan it's been two and a half years I tried like I, a couple of times I tried eggs. I tried like a bit of like goat yogurt, but then I really didn't like it right afterwards. And uh, one thing my chiropractor told me that uh, uh, I need to have some collagen. And I, um, 
I bought the collagen, like I couldn't find any vegan collagen, uh, but I found one which was like organic and like it had all these different uh, mm -hmm. mixtures. And But then when I take it, I feel like it because it was taken from a like pasture raised bobbin uh, from a like a cow or whatever. But every time I try to take it, I feel like it, I mean, still there has been an animal that killed, got killed for that. So it will really kind of like, uh, but does it really have an effect that if you don't take any kind of collagen, if I eat oranges, for example, I know that they have collagen, right? Mm -hmm. The lemon has collagen. Mm -hmm. But do you think that it has effect on the joint pain and, you know, uh, the lack of collagen? Uh, in like in vegan diet? Yeah, it's interesting. You know, all, all you know, that's... Uh... Yeah, collagen is very good for joint. Actually, in mm -hmm. Chinese medicine, we eat tendon soup. Oh, <laughs> if you have a problem with tendon, you eat tendon soup. I actually okay. ate it once because I <laughs> it was not tasty. But you know, sometimes, <laughs> uh, sometimes uh, even in uh, pho, you know, the Vietnamese pho, they do yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the soft okay. tendons and they do the tripe, the the intestine, and all that. Okay. And that has a lot of minerals. Yeah, it has a lot of nutrition in it. You know, I mm -hmm. remember this a person got stuck in the middle of the ocean mm -hmm. and he started to eat the whole fish and only then he become healthy because he started to eat only the fish, okay. the, the fish skin, the filet, and then only the muscle, like what we eat, the filet. But he got very sick and then he started to eat the eyes and the intestine and the eye. He was on a, on a boat. There was a documentary. He was stuck on a boat for over half a year in yeah. the middle of the ocean until... <laughs> And then because he eat the whole animal, he was able to maintain it only when he eat the whole animal. It's very interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in terms of vegan, you know, in terms of, uh, I don't see that there's a problem in, in vegan diet to maintain health and well-being. I tell you that the monk that I trained with, I told you with the Haida, he was yeah. vegan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he was vegan 100% and you know I was like what do we get because I ate with them with the monks yeah. yeah. and we all ate the same I, I was like okay they're just eating rice and nothing I mean it's mm. regular mm -hmm. food but mm -hmm. really the practices the practices mm -hmm. you know the practices that you do mm -hmm. for the joints see uh, that's the thing I'm vegan and I don't eat much I'm intermittent diet and I can do, I usually do three hours of Qigong every day. And I do like uh, weight training, like uh, like an anaerobic activities. And I go for a hike every morning. And I don't That's feel like pain or I don't feel any of those, right? I, and I've always had problems with my digestion. But ever since I'm vegan, I find that I don't have that digestion problems. I don't have any of those stuff. But I still have my joint my achy joints and I have my lower back problems and, as well. So but I, I, would, I, would is, uh -huh, I would encourage you to come to the workshop because we're going to learn some stuff. I the mean, problem it's, is that your workshop is right when I'm traveling. And, oh, uh, 30th, uh, yeah, May yeah. 30th. But we're going to record it and send the recording. So okay. uh, what I'm going to teach in this workshop is something I don't teach in the, usually the, the classes, okay. but you just have to take, I will say it in the workshop, this practice, this practice, but you can strengthen it's yes diet is very important i don't think a vegan diet inhibits you from being with the strong bones and joints i don't mm -hmm. think so even though in chinese medicine we say we have to eat your diet should have should include 10 percent meat so 90 percent plant-based and 10 percent 10 percent is meat so it's almost like a spice mm -hmm. so the meat is not it's not a big, if you look at your plate, 10% is very small, okay. uh, but, uh, uh, but that's in, that's in Chinese medicine. But well, again, I've, sardines I've been, or stuff like that. Sorry. Sardines maybe like, yeah, yeah. Whatever it is. Yeah. Whatever it is you want to eat, but you can, uh, but again, I've seen monks uh, that are very strong and they do great with the a completely vegan diet. You know, our there's a lot to talk about diet. That's a very big topic. And we live in such, there's so much stress on our body right now in modern life that I think um, it's, it's very interesting. So the incorporation of meat, even if it's a very small percentage, for me, 
it's it's appropriate, mm -hmm. uh, but just because of the way we live today. Um, but I know that people have different opinions and and all that stuff. So I, you know, there's no right or wrong. It's very much of listening to your own body. But uh, I don't think being vegan is inhibiting you from being a very vital and healthy, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in any way. So, uh, wow, what a beautiful discussion. Sorry, we have to close because I kind of promised it to be a short uh, half an hour. <laughs> but I'm, I'm just really, really excited that this has been such a, a, you know, good, good discussions. Um, let's close it with hands on the heart and just... Uh, Kind of close our eyes and breathe into your heart. And as we breathe into the heart and think about our heart energy, open your attention to the entire body and all the joints and ligaments and bones, all the density in the body that you feel and just smile to it. Smile to the joints, smile to the bones and be thankful. Yeah, let's cultivate a sense of gratitude to the health, vitality we have. One of the things that we say we are, can improve on is when we are grateful for something, this something comes more into our life so let's be grateful for our for all the joints tendons ligament bones that carries all these years and really close the eyes and look at them specific area that you want to give some good chi to Nice, let's open the hands to the side, open the eyes. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you so much. And I, I do invite you to join the workshop on May 30th and we will record it. And we're gonna explore a little deeper these practices, the practices that this monk showed me. <laughs> some of them are strong, some of them take time, but if you wanna learn uh, really powerful stuff, uh, I'd love, to have you join. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you next week. <laughs> thank you, Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.